Today on Core Conversations, we have Misty Coffin. Misty is the owner of Dragonfly Pilates in the Pittsburgh area. She is a passionate human being and our conversations center around themes of mentoring, not playing well with others, and the crucial mistakes that business owners made in March that are gonna hurt them for the rest of the year. She speaks encouragement to boutique owners and appeals to micro business owners to think big while paying attention to the small things. Enjoy the conversation. Sure, sure. So I am Misty Coffin and I own Dragonfly Pilates. Uh, we have two studios in the Pittsburgh area. And um, I've had, I opened my first studio back in 07 and uh, my second in 2013. I'm a balanced body master trainer and um, love, love the teacher training aspect. But I also love the nitty gritty of just working with different regular bodies in the okay. studios. Yes. One of my favorite things. So, yeah. And I, I also do, you, you mentioned business earlier. I've also yes. been doing a little bit of consulting here and there for people who are a bit stymied with what's happening now and where we're going next. So um, it's, it's nice to be able to help people in that way because I know it's, a, it's not been an easy pivot for a lot of people. No, it hasn't. Now, are you like charging and doing that or are you just kind of helping out and supporting like are you making this like like a separate branch to your business per se or like how are you doing that helping consulting part definitely an evolution for um the business so it, it's a it's another branch of what i do um but you know it's i'm still heavily rooted in the the pilates business world you know when i opened my first brick and mortar i had nobody to talk to I just kind of had to wing it and mm. wing it is something that I enjoy so it's it's not that big of a deal but you know when you look at times like what's going on right now having a plan is important and you know your messaging to yourself is just as important as your messaging to other people so yes. um you know I, in general I've seen a need for that um and then especially now I I've just really feel the need to help people find their way. Mm -hmm. What do you mean like messaging to yourself? So, well, you, let, let's talk about it. Let's, mm -hmm. let's look at the fact that many of us had to take on a whole new way of, not just life, but way of operating in a very short span of time. It was a quick pivot we had to get out there and sometimes when you get into that sort of situation, it's stressful. And, well, all the time, actually. Yes. <laughs> but sometimes we stop listening to ourselves and, and what resonates with us, what makes us do what we do or how we do it, mm -hmm. because we're so caught up in the maelstrom that is the new challenge. Yes. And when we stop listening to us, ourselves, it makes it a lot harder to serve in, in the spirit of why we got into it in the first place. So yes, it's true. I think that's important to recognize is, am I just allowing myself to hear the current? Or am I allowing myself to hear my own voice over the current? So then I have direction. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that? Because there will be times when you have to just bury your head and work through some tough times when you're not in your area of of passion in your area of why so how do you how do you balance those two out that's just such a good question um <laughs> you know and let's be honest about it there's always going to be a time where you you do get dragged out of your own head mm -hmm. I, I think that it's that's just reality and we have to own it we have to embrace it yes acknowledge it and then we have to say, okay, that was fun. Now let me get back to the grindstone here. Let's, let's like bring it in. Like sarcastic fun, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if not, you just spin. And right. it, you're no good to yourself and you're no good to your public if you're spinning around in circles. And I'll be the mm. first person to tell you, I spin around in circles. I'm mm. a creative person. I'm an ideas person. And so it's easy to get lost in that. But what I've also found is, is the quicker you acknowledge the fact that, okay, I might be on the do you remember that thing when you were a kid i don't know if you guys if you had it but you sat on it it was called a sit and spin 
Okay. Yes. And you sit on it and you pull it and you go around in circles. Yeah. The minute you say, okay, I am on the sit and spin and this was great. And now it's time to get off and get back to work. Mm -hmm. That's the minute you take charge once again. Yes. Right. So it's recognizing the season that you're in. For sure. Yeah, recognizing yeah. it, owning it, but not letting it control us. Right. Yes. And Palermo uh, Pilates is saying that she loves the sit and spin, just for the record. You know, I would just <laughs> like to say section. that if they brought back the, the sit and spin for adults, I'd mm -hmm. be the first one in line. Okay. Love it. Maybe that you could sell that out of your studio, Miss Businesswoman. You can just have That's those right. Over. You could brand so, yeah. them. Dragon Call Mattel and now. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My conversation with Michael yesterday was, uh, was interesting in that we talk a lot about the, um, uh, we talk a lot about those finding those balances and kind of staying when we stray out of that center to do things. And I use the example of a, a basketball player that I was talking with and he was talking about, he's playing basketball, but he needs to think about what does he do after basketball? Right. As a pro, what are you going to do at 28 when you're retired? Right. right. Like, um, and the, the, the struggle is between being faithful to the thing you're doing right now and being dedicated to the thing you're doing right now and giving some time and thought and energy to what's next without feeling like you're betraying the thing that you're supposed to be dedicated to. A hundred percent. And one thing I'll say along with that is we kind we were told that the only way to be successful is to look at what we've got right in front of us. Mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of us in boutique fitness get into boutique fitness because, well, let's be honest, we don't play well with others. We don't like to share. We know how we want it to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the issue with that is that when you're that passionate about something and you dive head in and you're only looking at right now, when something down the road happens that's, I don't want to say catastrophic, like, because it doesn't have to be a pandemic. Right. Right. But when something happens to shake the tree, yes, we're not prepared mentally, physically, emotionally mm -hmm. to progress forward then. Right. So we have, in trying to not betray our current mission, we've sacrificed our future. Yes or at least made it a lot more cumbersome to get into. Right, so, right, right. you know, I, I and I, I get this because like I said, as the adventurer, as the dreamer, you know, I'm always three, five, seven, nine steps ahead and having to circle back and say, oh, this might be a piece that I left <laughs> behind. Right. Finding the balance between those two portions of, you know, I'm thinking ahead and protecting my, my future but I'm really strongly anchored in my vision for the present is the key, right? I it's mean, if we can find that, we win. Right, absolutely. And, and Michael said it yesterday in a real uh, succinct way is when he's working with men, he'll talk about the whole kind of scope of your life. Like, so when you look at it in the grand scheme of what you see as a success for yourself, um, he used the example of a boxer that he's working with him getting his championship belt and things, those are all important pieces of the puzzle, but that's not the whole story. So, you know, when I put it back into my own speak and my own lens, I look at it like, okay, well, that's a checkpoint. That's not a destination. For sure. So right. I, so I can hit that destination, but also be thinking about what, I mean, I can hit that checkpoint, but also be thinking of what the next checkpoint is and not feel like I'm, I'm pulling away from my attention on, building my studio or opening a thing or whatever it is I'm doing, I can be thinking about what the whole scope of everything I'm doing looks like. And this one checkpoint all along the way gets his attention, but then it, we recognize that, like you are saying, there's other pieces to it that we don't sacrifice in the future as a result of it. Right, right. And mm. the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, this is a very topsy-turvy business in general, right? The fitness world, uh, boutique fitness, you know, keep going down the funnel, Pilates, mm -hmm. yoga, whatever. First of all, most of us are micro businesses. We're not even small businesses. We are yes. everything, mm -hmm. but in a small, small capsule, we have got to make sure that we're looking more broadly at it without losing that micro focus. 
So the I love points that, are critical. Yes, yes. I love what you're saying about a micro business. I've never really heard that term in this context, but that is exactly it. So even with treating these like micro businesses, we have to look at them. Like, even though, accepting the fact that it's a micro business, we need to treat it like it's a small business or a large business or a corporation. Right, right. And that's the thing, Martin. You know, when I first started Dragonfly, <laughs> just a little bit of a... a background, but I'll tie it all in together. When I first started Dragonfly, I wasn't thinking about opening one bit studio. My goal was five, five oh, studios yeah. and get right out of the gate, five. Out. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I told okay. you. When mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had to adjust that once I got into the second studio and realizing what that meant in terms of ramifications for the first one. Okay. And then I had to look at it and think of scalability. Does it make sense to scale it to five? Mm. No, it doesn't make sense to scale it to five as a micro business that is wholly dependent upon me and what I do. Right. Um, now, I have a, a fantastic team of people that I work with, but it's, it's, it's a still the misty show, right? To some degree. It's the misty show. Right. And, and PS, that was something that I struggled with because mm -hmm. I was like, it's a team. Yay. We're mm -hmm. all going to work together. Yay. And, um, what I found out is it's, it's great to have a team, but people are coming in on my name and then yes. they're happy to work with the rest of the team once they get in, but they want to, snuggle in with the owner first mm -hmm. and that has to be a consideration when you think of how you open your business yes what your opening strategy is going to be and then how you scale it moving forward do i build the brand in a way hypothetically speaking any brand it could be a barber shop it could be a personal training studio do i build it with the notion that i'm creating a system that is scalable or do i just kind of resign to the fact that people are going to come for me whether i build a system or not and just go with it. Because as much as in my head, I like to think that I can build a system that people are gonna come because the system is amazing and their, their customer experience is fantastic and this is stellar and we're getting great reviews. It's still the Martin Reed show. It's still the Misty show at the end of the day, regardless of how systemized we have the whole process going. Right. And um, so I, yeah, so I, a friend of mine opened a barber shop in the Toronto area and um called it nappies and he he wanted to do that very thing where instead of coming in to, to see chris you go into to nappies and then you you could play dominoes and you could you could hang out there and have socials and there's barbers and all these different things and he wanted to make it such that someone could walk in and just take the first available barber instead of waiting for their person because mm -hmm. they didn't want it to be the you know chris show or whatever it is and you know it's you can do that all you want, but you still end up at it being the one man show. So the yeah. question is, how do you utilize your team knowing that people are still going to come and see you with two locations? Well, you have to honor your team. Um, and when I say honor your team, you have to talk them up. You have yeah. to say, you know what, I know that you're here to work with me and you know, maybe you did your introductory session with me or whatever it is, but mm -hmm. this person on my team is fantastic. I'm looking at what your body needs, what your body is telling me, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you that this person over here is going to be really good in, in terms of matching needs to skill set. Yes. A and I tend to think that if you create that relationship with that consumer right away, mm -hmm. that I'm never going to lead you wrong. Trust me to, to take care of you the best way I can. Right. Then that trade off, that pass off is a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And then you also just reinforce, hey, and if it doesn't work, we get back together, we work together, and I find somebody else for you to work with. Right. Um, <laughs> You're not staying with me, but I'm here for you. You can't stay in my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um, because you, you'll end up overworking yourself into the ground, which, yes. you know, I've, I've been there too. I love what I do until I get to the point where I, I need to say uncle and then I can't. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta go to bed, you know? Yes. Um, but I can't because I, mm -hmm. I've made people too dependent upon me. 
-hmm. It was a hard thing for me to learn. Um, but a lot of it comes down to trust. A lot of it comes down to finding the right people and believing in yourself as an owner, yes. being able to say, I, ha I know I've installed the right people in my business. Mm -hmm. I know I've trained them well. And now I get to show them how much I believe in them. Yes. And I think there's a, the other part of that too, and I, I, I sniff this out with people all the time, is when people are confident leaders, you can staff to your weaknesses and not feel threatened by the fact that this person might actually be better than you, even though they're in your building. Yes. So as a teacher trainer, um, one of the things that I say to everybody, you know, as soon as we start movement is, you know, I'm teaching them and I, I say, my goal is to have every single one of you be a better teacher than me, hands mm. down. Yes. I want to watch you teach and be like, oh, man, I, I, I've got so much to get from this person. And it doesn't necessarily come from them having to surpass me in terms of knowledge. Right. But it's, it's personality. personality. It's what they bring yeah. to the table. Yes. It's about looking at the people in front of them as individuals and being mm -hmm. able to reach every single one of them. Yes. So what you lack in skill at the beginning you can develop, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't want a bunch of Misty clones out there. I don't know that the world wants that. That sounds terrifying, <laughs> but uh, more importantly, it's, it's, it's not what people need. People don't need it's not 50 Misty's. Need. Right, like personal training is personal, full stop, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, if there's someone who could have taken a weekend course who is dynamic and brilliant and intuitive and has a great eye and they could be super busy, and you could have someone who has their master's degree and has been in the field for 20 years and they can't sell a session. And it all comes down to that combination of their skill set and their personality and the fit with the individual. Sure. I mean, yeah. and you know how we are in the Pilates world with training. You mm -hmm. know. Are you trained this way? Are you trained who are that you trained way? With? Who are you apprenticed you know, did the from? Wind blow from the east on the day you got trained. And if mm -hmm. not, then you're not that great. You know, whatever it is. Right. Um, there are really talented people out there that run away from this world, mm -hmm. this teaching world that we have here, because either they're not given the chance because they don't have the right pedigree. And really yep. what they need is a little bit of extra work and a little bit of extra time and mentoring, which mm -hmm. we've gotten away from in this business and I really think needs to come back. Um, or the environment that we create feels inhospitable. And what yes. I mean by that is just, you know, I want a bunch of people that say the right thing, do the right thing, blah, 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 to work for me. But we haven't really set the, the checkpoints or the benchmarks as to what that is. Yes. And that circles back to mentoring too, actually. Right. And mentoring can be taken on, I call them like three different levels, right? So you have mentors in terms of people that you look up to that you're pouring into and you have mentors that are shoulder to shoulder peer mentors that you can bounce stuff off of. And then mentors in terms of those who you are kind of reaching quote unquote down to help up. Right. So we have those three levels of mentors in our world. There's someone I'm learning from someone that I'm walking with and someone that I'm helping to come up to that level. And I think that on all three levels that it's totally lacking, especially in the, in the Pilates world, unless you did the teacher training with that individual. Right. Yes, indeed. And I think that's, you know, that's the issue. It's so transient, mm -hmm. you know, people come in from here, there, everywhere, which I think is great, but they make that connection in the teacher training and then they don't reinforce that. And I, I right. tell all of my trainees, you know, let's make sure that you walk out of here with phone numbers and email addresses. And yes. even if you're not in the same town, mm -hmm. make the time to ping ideas off of each other and really yes. work the work. And, you know, there's no reason why in 2020 that we can't be doing this. Look at what we're doing here at this right. particular moment. Um, it's, it's a shame that that's happened, but I'm hoping that with this new vehicle working for people so well, that they start to utilize that, the ability to stay in touch and work with people at that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring level. Yes. 
I have to say, you know, I've even with this platform and this core conversation is that as people start to look at what I'm doing, I've had some really nice messages from people. And one instructor in particular who saw one of my classes I was teaching and said, I noticed that your back is kind of tight. I'd love to work with you before we go on. Can we just book a half an hour and just do a quick session? I just want to just to just work, just to kind of kick your butt for a minute and just see if I can get some, you know, that sort of thing. And it was, it's so organic, but you see how there's people that have that level of passion for the work that it doesn't matter about the dollar that you're going to make or what your pedigree is. They just want to see people moving freely, being happy, learning and, and, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I was to reach out to this person and say, hey, could you mentor me that they would be willing to do that just because they're that passionate about the work globally speaking, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I have to, I think that's amazing. I thought I take this as a challenge too, right? Like I see other people moving and I'm like, okay, I'd love to do that for people and just connect with, with people who are hungry to learn because, sorry, not to go on a, on a big rant there, but I, I think great. I think people are sometimes afraid to approach, approach people to offer that correction and that encouragement because they think that they're going to be threatened by it. That I'm going to take offense. They, to are. they are. They totally Let's are. About it, so, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, I guess they won in reaching out to me because I'm like, yes, teach me, tell me, right? <laughs> like, because like, I'm not offended at all. Like, I'm a sponge. I'll put stuff out there that's wrong just so you can teach me. But um, I think that there needs on one end like you said that mentoring is there is, is needed but i think the uh the mentees need to arise like what's what's that saying like when when the student is ready when the student is ready the teacher appears yes for sure and it's um getting back to your point about the feeling that some being concerned that someone might feel threatened or you know, whatever, it's it's a tough industry in that you know, you've got a lot of people who have backgrounds and you know, whether it's a storied background in dance or mm. you know, whatever type of athlete they were and they come into this work and depending upon how we communicate our background, it creates <laughs> I see where you're going. <laughs> you know that was I mean. so diplomatic the way you put that out there. Uh, I was I was massaging it. In you my boy, you, you, know. you massage that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's 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 true. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't care if you danced, I don't care if you were an accountant. Um and if you're an accountant, I could probably use your help. <laughs> you know, at the at the end of the day what is it? I, I don't want it to be like, I'm here and you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, but that I think is a big hang up that people either come in with or they, they develop if they go onto forums or whatever, and they see all the rah, rah, rah. Yes. I think that if we, when we approach people, we meet them where they are mm -hmm. every time. Yes. Because just like we say, when we're dealing with customers, they're individuals. Even yes. when we're working with fellow teachers, sometimes teachers who have been teaching longer than us even, mm -hmm. if, if we come to them from a good place, from an open heart, ready to share, yes, and they're in that place too, and the timing is right, it appears, like you said, and yes. then the relationships are built. <laughs> you massage that so well. Hey, thanks. That was I really try. good. That was beautiful. I try. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Oh man, that was really good. Um, <laughs> not playing well with others. I when I started at Lifetime Athletic a long time ago, people were shocked that I went from running my own business to working at a big box gym. And the question that I got a lot of times is, why would you stop working for yourself to work for somebody else? The notion was that everybody that is working for themselves doesn't play well with others. They don't want to be someone else's boss. They don't. And I found that for me, it was me wanting to be part of something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. It was part of me being wanting to have a, an opportunity to impact the culture of a new gym that was coming. That was the first lifetime in Canada. And I really felt like 
it was important for me to establish what the ethos of this place would be from a personal training perspective. Nice. You know what I mean? So there was something in me that was like, okay, yeah, I could work for myself or I could actually be part of what is my kind of bigger vision for myself in terms of having a bigger impact. So with this humongous building that's coming on the landscape, everyone's going to see that. And I want people to know that I had something to do with the way that personal training looks in that building. And so. That was a long time ago. But I still think that that's cool because mm -hmm. especially when something new is coming into your market, right? Um, One, it allows you to shape the future of what, this product that you have dedicated and devoted all of your time to over the years Mm -hmm. continues to look like in your market. Yes. You know, you were saying, I'm setting the standard. Mm -hmm. I've already set the standard and I'm going to bring this here so that I'm protecting it. Yes. Maybe. I I mean, that's That's, no, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. And it's funny you say that because high octane training, uh, Mississauga is uh, one of my colleagues when I was working at Lifetime and now I'm working out of his building. And so when we work together, we've had this conversation a few times and I've I've never heard it said that way. And Andrew, if you want to comment on that, that's true. I think it is that, that we are, I was trying to protect that in bringing that in and making sure that was established in that way. That's, yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that's important because you know, especially those of us that have been doing this for a long, long time, we value this so much. It's Mm. personal to us. Yes, right. We don't want an upstart coming in and essentially taking what we have built in terms of, you know, what our particular modality of fitness is Mm. and turning it into something that is detrimental to the business, is detrimental to what we have done over time, whatever. I think it's pissing on the tree is the only thing I can come up with right now. (laughs) But you know what I mean? You're marking the territory and not saying you can't play here, but saying that this is my neighborhood and I am the expert in this community. And either let's work together or understand that I'm going to continue to build and grow and you're not going to get to come play in my sandbox. Right. So when I say does not play well with others, I mean, that's true about a lot of us, but it's also true to say that we're protective. Yes. And we're open to sharing, but we're not open to systematic dismantling for the sake of yes. cat fighting. Right, 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 right. But then it also sounds, I hear in a sense, like it's almost strategic. Uh, oh, yes. It must be. It's, it's strategic, but almost, I don't want to say devious. Like there's something diabolical about the way that instead of saying, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to open up my own shop and just do my thing across the street. It's like, no, I'm going to infiltrate this to make sure that the thing that's best for this industry is happening. I'm going to protect that that sacred thing Would from the Would you say inside. that it was devious though if a new grocery store moved into your town? No, 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 it's true. Or anything like that? You know, yeah. I we put ourselves in this place in boutique fitness where, you know, there's, once again, it's factionalizing, it's tribal. Yes. And it doesn't have to be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, when I, I started off working on my own and then I went to a club and then I opened my own place and I didn't leave the club necessarily because I didn't want to play well with others I left the club because I felt my message was better Uh, my message is everybody can do this mm -hmm. it is inclusive I don't care what your physical condition is I don't care if the last time you worked out was when you were being born you know whatever there's a place for you here. Yes. And in the club environment, I felt like it bred factionalization. It, mm-hmm. it bred the only people that can wear the, this outfit and look this fabulous can come into this class. And I, I didn't like it. And um, yeah. 
I, I believe that that's a huge problem with fitness in general. Yes. Right. And, um, you know, so being out on my own, back again on my own, and I've been on my own now for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like the tone that I'm setting is all are welcome. Be a part of making this community look bigger and better and bolder. Yes. And, and however I can do that, that's the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, well said. Really well said. And I think that takes a negative connotation off of doesn't play well with others too, um, which had a negative connotation in my head because I'm like the person who likes to think I can be a peacemaker and all those different things. You are so chill like all the time. It's, yeah. That's what I, re I really admire that about you. Yeah, like it that, doesn't take- It's very Canadian. Uh, I don't know. This, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It could be the Jamaican in me too, right? It's like, well, you know, let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> so I like it. Yeah. Um, Andrew's on here too. High octane, and um, one of the things too with him now in working with in his space once again, I don't have this inkling like I need to do something out on my own. I almost feel more. Uh, empowered when I'm coming along some, alongside someone who subscribes to the same things as me from that perspective, right? So I wow. see what he's doing there. And it's just like, yes, that's exactly it. Like, I love the community that he's building there. And I teach my Pilates out of there. I, I train my clients out of there. And, and I feel like instead of saying, I need to hang my own shingle two doors down and pull everyone in there, it's like, I want to make what he's doing bigger, because it, it, there's a mutual benefit, a mutual benefit of us growing that together. Uh, yeah, you're building a community and you're shaping an industry. Shaping and what's industry. neat too is your Pilates people may never have looked at other types of personal training. Right. You know, without that relationship that you've built with Andrew, I mean. Right. There are people that say, oh, my gosh, I'm never doing Pilates. It looks terrible. You work on torture devices, and I'm not ever going to try it. But, you know, they walk into Andrew's environment. They see you there. And they're like, oh, first of all, he's got a mad body. Like, how did that happen? Did Pilates do that for him? And it opens up a whole new conversation to a market that would not even consider talking to you in the past. Right. So yes. it's, it's great. It if is you can great. find the person, the right alchemy... Mm -hmm. with someone then it it benefits everybody right yeah that that really should be the pursuit right and it's it's funny how that comes full circle to mentoring like when you reach out and you connect and you can get over yourself enough to learn from someone and hear someone else's story that's when you land at that that beautiful connection yeah yeah I, and you know i've been when i started my pilates journey i was all by myself I mean, for yeah. years upon years upon years. And so when I became a teacher trainer, I said, I don't ever want anybody to feel like they have to forge this on their own. Yes. Um, because once again, a lot of really great talent eventually flames out because it's hard to be an island. Absolutely. So, you know, if you can just continue to build that and, you know, we're influencing what happens with our world moving forward. Yes, absolutely. Just want to say a quick hello to everyone on this page here. I see Maria Earl. Hi, Maria. Maria is fantastic. I took class from her in Barcelona. Okay. Um, well, Where's she located? Oh, she's in this fantastic town called San Ugat. Okay. Just north, like 30 minutes north of downtown Barcelona. And okay. it is the most idyllic little town I've ever been to. She took me to the market and I had to take pictures. Mm -hmm. It was a real market. I couldn't buy like lawn chairs and stuff. I had to buy food at the market. Yes. Like, it should be. Amazing <laughs> right. town. And she's an amazing talent. Yes. So I hear like Sonia said that, Nikki said that. I, I would, Maria, if you're still on right now, I'd love to have you on for a conversation because everyone is talking about how amazing you are. So. Um, we got to make that happen. And um, okay. yeah, well, when I had Miguel on as well, uh, Miguel Silva, another like, you know, he's in a small town in Spain. And we talked about this sense of in the US and in Canada, you want to have this downtown storefront studio, 
Whereas like people like him are like, I'm just going as far as possible from people. I'm going to find the smallest little town, be the only person for the next hundred kilometers and just do my Pilates in my home. <laughs> like, it in seems my- like it's, you know, it's <laughs> such a different mindset, right? Like it's a totally different approach to the exact same thing that we're doing. Well, it's so American to feel like I've got to go to the biggest place, da, 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 you know, mm. the brightest lights, the twinkle lights. Um, <laughs> right. yeah. we, we have to make a big giant mark. But there's such beauty in being able to say, you know what, that's that's not what makes me burn inside. What makes me burn inside is to just, you know, find my hole. I I call it something a little bit jazzier, but Mm -hmm. find my little space, my little corner. Yes. And set up and just watch it bloom. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, well, what is that mark that we want to make, right? Is the mark just recognition? Or is it actual impact? Is it making money? Like, it, what, like, how do we define what making a mark looks like? You know, it, it's really funny. So one of my mentees, uh, she, I was talking to her and her husband, and her husband said, you know, I look at this Pilates thing for her as you know, her way for her to make money. And she looks at it as, I, I get to help people. And if she yes. had her way, she would never get paid. And mm-hmm. she would just do this and it would be fun. Right. And, you know, getting back all the way back to where we started with messaging, you have to know why you're doing it in the first place Mm -hmm. on the inside. And then that's the way you have to build your model. Not to say that you can't influence it and and morph it as you go along. Craft it as you go, right. But if you are a, a altruistic person and your goal is to just breathe and share the love of boutique fitness, Mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be trying to go aggressively at this massively capitalist model. Because it's not going to work for you. You're going to burn out and then you're going to go work at Wendy's. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, And, you know, and well, that's why I keep saying you staff to your weaknesses as well, right? So you may not be chasing up that model, but make sure you surround yourself with people who can do books and can look at algorithms and like look at how your, your posts are doing so you can actually do the thing that you love to do. Right. in the midst of it right right and you staff yes that's that's the thing too you know one of the things that i really hate doing i mean hated 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 is the financials the back office stuff like mm. i will run and i don't run ever but i will run away from that for as long <laughs> as i can yes and so i you know i realized that i couldn't afford not to have a person that did that for me or with me Yes. Couldn't afford not to do it. You know, we make mistakes as business owners in the front end of our businesses that can really drive us into the hole later down the road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to give an example of what's happening now, you know, we've been called non-essential, what we do. So, you know, we're still on lockdown. We're not able to open for still who knows how long in some places mm-hmm. and being not considered non-essential kind of hamstrings you in moving forward. Yeah. A lot of studio owners that I know when all of this started, started offering free classes mm-hmm. and free classes are all well and good, but then it's hard to get people off of the free classes. And so these right. people that started free back in March, or realizing that they're not going to make rent now. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying to pay for classes and their public is like, oh, well, why is it all of a sudden that you're charging me for it? Yes. You know, we have to getting back to planning and messaging and plotting out what our value is. Mm-hmm. We can't afford to make those mistakes early. Right. Yep, exactly. So true. And uh, yes, Happy Plies Monkey says you are so essential. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. are essential. I man. know, even if the government doesn't say so. Right, indeed. But, you know, and there are a lot of organizations out there that are now trying to help governments realize just how essential we are. <laughs> um, and, and that's going to be really important for our businesses moving forward. Um, but in the meantime, we have to stay relevant. We have to keep pushing forward. And one way to make sure that you are considered less than relevant is to give stuff away for free. Not, I mean, 
brief this a little bit here or there yeah. one you know, but it's it's very very different from i'm just not going to charge you because i love you well that's all well and good but love doesn't pay my bills i don't know about you no so tell me about some of your classes that you're running so what what does your virtual schedule look like and how have you integrated your your team into those classes so i have two uh teammates that are still teaching with me at the moment mm -hmm. we have we have a good number i can't remember the exact count right now but we've just added some more virtual classes Great. um mm -hmm. about four or five a, a day including privates that we're doing as well mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's a robust schedule, still six days a week. Um, we have reduced our class sizes a little bit. So we have four per class. And then we just, I've just started renting out chairs and um, some of my Allegro reformers so that we can do some virtual classes on the apparatus mm -hmm. online. So okay. uh, that's been fun too. There you go. Those are just such like pivots we just need to make, right? Like we need to be agile. We need to continue to to do that so yeah that's good it's you know survival is dependent upon being able to pivot not right. kicking and screaming but pivot in a way that allows us to build and grow so yes. you know keeping online going i think a lot of studio owners are going to find is a a money maker that we never considered some of us yeah exactly i wonder would you even consider hiring an online instructor someone just dedicated to curating virtual classes so they, they don't do any live classes but they just manage your whole online class schedule yeah i definitely think that that's something that that's a smart call because how are you going to split yourself into pieces when you go back to the studio you right, know there right, may right, be right. a huge rip or a huge split between who stays and who returns to the studio yes. right. and being able to say you know what you're not comfortable coming in but I have this person to teach you online could be what keeps you chugging along enough to be able to pay the rent. I think we just created a new job, basically a job, you know, posting because that doesn't even have to be necessarily someone who lives or works in your area. Like they exactly. could be someone who works remotely. Like I could work for you and be your virtual Pilates teacher and this is your robust schedule online. These are times that the person's gonna be meeting with you and it's just, uh, but they, they're under your banner, under your. Hmm. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. And I, I think also there are a lot of teachers out there who, you know, for family reasons or whatever, aren't going to be able to get back. Right. The yeah. way they used to, whether it's a, a family reason or even a personal health issue. Yes. So, you know, not leaving those people out in the cold is, is going to be really important. You know, mm -hmm. our, our teachers, our fellow teachers are going to need us. Right. So, you know, we have to honor them and, and you know, it's not going to be easy for everybody to, to do that. But for those that are able to teach online and are willing to do it, then, you know, why not make a place for them? Right. That gives accessibility and inclusivity a new dynamic for sure i have a friend who's coming on next thursday um pilates bars and jams Teresa ellis oh yes 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 that is going to be interesting she is so she's a fireball right like she's just, oh, she's man. wild Her so for those of you be like this is huge I, I think i'm gonna be holding on for the ride in the conversation because she's just uh it's been interesting just chatting with her in conversation, like just before. For those of you who don't know who she is, uh, she is a Pilates instructor and she works with, I guess marginalized populations would be a general way of saying it. Um, people who are overweight, people who are sex workers, people who identify differently than what the mainstream would expect to see in your standard gym where Lululemon is a prerequisite to come in the door. Um, so it'll be interesting having a conversation about that because we all have our special, our, our populations and people that we're passionate about working with. Well, and I think it's brilliant because, you know, once again, there's another whole segment of humanity that feels ostracized, feels left out yes. from the traditional workout environment. 
Great. Nobody wants to go somewhere and be stared down or ogled or, or whatever it is. It's not comfortable. Right. And, um, you know, that she has been able to, I'm using the term capitalize, but I know this is a passion for her. So it's not capitalizing in as much as it's meeting people where they are once where again. They are. Yes. You know, I, I think it's, it's brilliant and it's great. And, you know, Teresa's got a way. She is very much her own brand of powerhouse. Yes. And so, you know, that population that she has, and I bet you that she is just loved and adored mm -hmm. because she's doing something that nobody else has taken the time to do for right. populations that are often cast aside. So yes. I love it. Yeah, I love same, it. Same. It's been interesting just even just talking with her about like, what can I say? Like, how do you, what are the proper phrases and, and terminology and, and references? Like I'm, I'm learning as well from her just from having these conversations, right? So it's, it's going to be interesting because I think that, like you said, you know, these populations are so underserviced. And, and, and why? 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 Yeah. Why? There's no reason for it other than, you know, we, we've essentially been socialized as to how and who and, and why. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's time to change all of that. It's time to make it a priority to, to treat people like people. Who, who is that person that you just love working with the most? And don't give me the warm, fuzzy, everybody answer. Yeah, no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I started doing this, I thought, I'm going to work with athletes and take them to the next level and blah, 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 whatever. And working with athletes is great. It, it's a lot of fun. It challenges you as the trainer to get them to the next level of, of fabulousness, whatever. Yes. But I, <laughs> somewhere or another, and I can't describe exactly where it happened, I actually became very, very much in love with post rehab work. Oh, and yeah. I okay. think it's because, you know, these are the people, that maybe they don't even want to be here, mm -hmm. but they have to be here. And being able to restore for them the gift of movement, having them find the trust in their bodies again, yes. to believe in their bodies to say, I can get up off of the floor. I, I have not been able to get off of the floor in years. But now I can. And wow. now I can walk with my grandkids and not feel like I'm going to need to sit down for 20 minutes. Yes. I can be a participant wow. in their lives and my own. Yes. That is my population. I love it. I'm like getting hot just talking. About it. <laughs> I <was gonna> say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That I, uh, yeah, I, I can see that just all over you. It's, it's, I feel so humbled that every single day somebody says to me, you've improved my life today. Yes. And even just saying it, like I have to pause for a minute and breathe because mm -hmm. that is something that, you know, I wouldn't be able to say if I was doing a hundred thousand other things. I was in advertising for years before I got into Pilates and I got out of it because you know, great. I, I sold another fabulous idea for a computer. Okay, nothing wrong with that, but this is high touch. This is mm -hmm. this is bringing people back to life. To yes. you know, use Joe's term, right. yeah. getting them to return to life. Return to life. And there's, it's magic. It is. It is. Even the phrase "return to life" just had a new meaning when you put it in that context. I, I feel that every day when I teach. Yes. That is awesome. We just talked for 57 minutes. I mean, and it was breezy. Breezy. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Um, I will send you uh, the highlight of this. We'll see it on Core Conversations on the, on the, face group, on the Facebook page, the group page. And uh, thank you for your time. Missy, is so good chatting with you. So good catching Thank up with you. You. you are an amazing, amazing person. Thank you so, so much. And, you know, 
we met five years ago and I've been following you ever since. Thanks for listening to Core Conversation today. I encourage you to check out our website at personalvictory.ca slash core conversations to keep the conversation going. We have our forum where we can talk about different issues. You can highlight any teacher trainings that you have. You can ask questions of our guests and you can just find out who is coming up next. So join us there and thanks again for listening to Core Conversations.